WordPress Accessibility Day 2023. Ask Organizers Anything AMA Lightning Talk with Joel Dolson, Ryan Bracey, Nick Croft, and Amber Hines, organizers of WordPress Accessibility Day. This session was recorded on September 28th, 2023. Thank you to Equalize Digital for being the platinum sponsor of WordPress Accessibility Day. Uh, and now the third session about this uh, lightning talks is uh, about lightning talk ask organizers uh, anything wordpress accessibility day 2023 organizer ama first off luna barber asks if you were giving advice to a web developer trying to start up accessibility initiatives and projects at their current job what advice would you give Hey there, I'm Ryan Bracey. Um, if you're looking to introduce accessibility initiatives at your company, the first thing you're going to want to do is educate yourself on the basic principles and guidelines of the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, or WCAG. As soon as you introduce this initiative, you're naturally going to just become your company's go-to accessibility expert. So building a really solid knowledge foundation is going to be really critical to your success here. It's also important to remember that accessibility isn't a perfect science. It's more like a moving target. So staying up to date on emerging trends is gonna be really important as well. Make sure you participate in meetups, uh, attend conferences like this one, and join some community Slack channels. Um, all of this is gonna really give you invaluable knowledge and insight as things evolve over time. Once you have that foundation set and you go to present this initiative to your team, remember you're now your company's accessibility advocate and your team is going to be looking to you for guidance. So start educating them on the importance, the benefits, and the consequences of accessibility compliance, and then try to connect these principles back to what their specific roles and deliverables are within their teams. You'll also want to set some clear accessibility goals for your company and then start helping the different departments develop their own processes on how to best integrate accessibility into their own work. Most of all, you really always want to be communicating. Try to create a dedicated space, such as a Slack channel if you have a company Slack workspace, somewhere where you can share knowledge, uh, ask questions, and just foster discussion amongst each other. By following this advice and constantly advocating for accessibility within your company, you'll be able to create a significant and positive impact on just the overall inclusivity of the work your company creates. Tom asks, how would a deaf or hard of hearing person know if captions omitted words, particularly if the speaker's not visible? I am concerned about the potential for trouble when seeing do, when speaker actually meant do not. Hi, this is Joe Dawson. This is why accurate captions are important. The WCAG guidelines don't explicitly say that captions need to be accurate, but I'd argue that if a caption isn't accurate, then it isn't a caption. The definition of a caption in HTML5 is a transcription or translation of the dialogue, sound effects, relevant musical cues, and other relevant audio information when sound is unavailable or not clearly audible. Transcription is a precise reproduction of the meaningful spoken text. Translation is a faithful reproduction of the meaning of that text in another language. In either case, accuracy is a fundamental part of what makes that text meaningful. Live captioning, because it is done in real time, will contain mistakes. But for any pre-recorded video, if you don't take the opportunity to ensure accuracy, you're explicitly discriminating against deaf and hard of hearing populations. Whitney asks, what steps would you recommend a quality assurance software tester interested in 508 compliance testing take to get more experience in accessibility testing? Hey, this is Nick Croft. I, I've got a 508 uh, trusted tester certification. To do that, I went to this website. It is uh, www.dhs.gov slash 508 dash training. And uh, on this website, it has some information about the Trusted Tester training track. 
um, some accessibility documents, training, and other resources. So I highly recommend visiting this website. But the other great thing here, this link that says the new DHS training self-enrollment portal, if you click on that, you can go create a uh, web, uh, a login with their training portal and fill out all the, the information, go through the steps, and it takes you through a whole training course. Um, the training course will teach you to use the tools that they've created and teach you to use the testing methods that you have to follow for 508 testing. And then at the end of that, you take a series of tests as you go through and you take the final test and they will issue certification. Um, through doing this, it teaches you the uh, compliance criteria that, that they follow for 508 uh, certification and teaches you the exact methods and uh, tools that you need to use to verify compliance. I hope that helps. Chelsea asks, if we use plugins, we run into features within the plugins not being accessible and not having the access we need to fix accessibility issues directly. Do you have any favorite lists or resources to check on specific plugin recommendations or known plugin issues? Hi, I'm Amber Hines, and I'm happy to answer this question about whether or not there is a recommended list of plugins. But before I get to that list of plugins, I want to start by talking about some of the caveats um, or why it's really complicated to create a list of plugins that are accessible. First of all, there are a lot of plugins that may have a very accessible front end output, or perhaps they have zero front end output and they don't impact the front end of your website at all, but they have very inaccessible back ends. Um, so if you're starting to think about what is a list of accessible plugins we can use, I think the first thing you would need to know is whether you're looking for plugins that create accessible front ends or plugins that also have an accessible admin interface for people with disabilities who may be editing your WordPress website. And then once you know that, I think the next thing that you really have to keep in mind and what further complicates you know, creating this list is that there are many WordPress plugins that are accessible, but only with specific configurations or settings enabled in that plugin. And then, of course, we know in WordPress, things are constantly changing. There's always plugin updates and things that are being modified in plugins. And so creating a list of accessible plugins is something that could change. There could be a website that was very accessible today and I'll put it on the list and then they release an update and it's not gonna be accessible tomorrow or vice versa. There could be one that I go, I look at and I assess and I say, oh, this doesn't work very well. And then they release a giant accessibility improvement update and now it works perfectly. Keep in mind also that there is a sheer, just the sheer number of WordPress plugins that are available. So I always have a hard time when people ask me this, you know, is, is which, which page builder do you recommend, for example? Well, I haven't tried all of the page builders, so it's really hard for me to go out and say this one is the best, because how can I say it's the best if I haven't tried all of them? Um, and so just the reality of WordPress and how many plugins there are out there, there might be plugins that are really fabulous that I have just never tested for accessibility. Now that said, I don't want to leave you with a super roundabout answer and no uh, nothing concrete. So what we have done, and we will put a link to this in the chat so that everyone can have it uh, as a reference, is on the main WordPress Accessibility Day website, not the 2023 one, but the main one, we have a post up called Plugins We Use. And this includes a list of all of the plugins that are currently active on the 2023 event site. So if you're interested in that, you can go check that out. Take asks, dark mode, yay or nay? Is dark mode a fancy feature or a web accessibility must? Uh, hopefully you have seen the WordPress Accessibility Day website and uh, we created this with dark mode and light mode. I can toggle this off and you get the light mode setting and then toggle it back on. Um, with dark mode, it's best if we listen to the user's request. Uh, so you can set prefers uh, dark uh, color scheme, prefers light color scheme and enable that. And we can do that via media queries, and we can also get that information in JavaScript. Um, with this website, we also added the ability to switch modes, and that's not necessary. And uh, in some cases, 
a lot of users don't really switch back and forth between different things. Um, but having the ability to honor the user's request is important for accessibility. Um, I did a, a big talk about this uh, with the WordPress Accessibility Meetup group. Um, so in the WordPress Accessibility Meetup meet group, you can search for past events and find Dark, Light, and Inverted Developer's Guide to Color Modes with Nick Croft. Um, it's got some information on here about that. And then if you scroll in and look for the comments, uh, there's a comment that says, um, find the recap here, which takes you to a uh, page on EqualizeDigital.com. Uh, on this page, it's also Dark, Light, and Inverted, a developer's guide to color modes uh, with Nick Croft. And got a little bit of information about here, about the meetup. And then down at the bottom, you can watch the recording. In this recording, I go into a lot of details about uh, the importance of using media queries to honor users' requests and how that is an accessibility bonus for people. Um, for me, I prefer dark mode as a personal thing, and it is not detrimental to my ability to consume content. Uh, for some other users, dark mode is extremely important to their ability to consume content. Uh, light sensitivity and other um, uh, disabilities can make it difficult for them to use a very bright background like this with white text, where a dark mode background, more like what we have on uh, the WordPress Accessibility Day website, works great for them. So I do believe that it is a uh, web accessibility benefit, um, but it is not currently something that will cause your site to fail in accessibility. So this is a bonus that we give to users. Um, as things evolve and grow in the future, we may see changes to that. But right now, it's definitely worth uh, investigating and starting to use. Hope that helps. Chris asks, do you have any data about motor function disability being able to mouse and hit targets? This is a complicated question to unpack. First, what data is important here? There's data about people who have gross or fine motor function impairments, um, but that doesn't tell us much about their use of a computer. We could go looking for data on what percentage of these users are able to use a mouse, but practically speaking, that's most of them. A lot of standard mice have a high precision mode that slows travel and makes it easier to target objects. Assistive technology includes a wide variety of different pointing devices, including trackballs, joysticks, switches, trackpads. Um, all of those can be used to point at an object on a screen and hit a target. As a result, people with motor disabilities are quite likely to be able to use a mouse, at least in some sense of the word. I wrote an article a few years ago about the myth of the keyboard only user. We work very hard in accessibility to make everything keyboard accessible so that you can use every single part of a website or an application using the keyboard. However, this isn't really about some theoretical user who can't use a pointing device. It's about time and efficiency. People with motor disabilities may struggle to change interface modes. If you're currently using a pointing device, you use the pointing device. But if you're currently using a keyboard, maybe it costs you 15 minutes and a spoon to switch modes. So if a, if, a, if a control can only be used with a pointer, you can use it. But what's the cost? The point of making everything keyboard accessible is that a user should be able to use any control with the tool of their choice. So getting back to that data question, I think the most useful data would be an appraisal of time lost. How much time has it cost this user because they could only use a control with a mouse? Even if each individual action is only a few seconds lost, that aggregate loss of time could be enormous. Data about motor function impairments that impact the use of computers is underrepresented in common data sets. Uh, the CDC, or Center for Disease Control, publishes a data collection standard. Uh, it's the six standard disability questions, or the Washington group questions, that doesn't capture this, inf uh, that doesn't capture this information in any way. It, it is focused on motor disabilities that impact walking and moving around or showering and, and specific activities, but it doesn't cover computers. So effectively, I don't have any useful data about this. If I was looking for it, I'd be comparing the time to complete tasks for users with motor function impairments against a control baseline so that we could really get a sense of what the overall time cost for these users is. 
And Arnisha asks, there are so many WordPress themes to choose from, and I would assume that some are built with accessibility in mind, while others are not. Do you have any tips for finding and choosing a more accessible theme? What criteria should average WordPress users look for when choosing a theme? A good place to start is looking at the requirements of the accessibility ready tag. Um, the accessibility ready tag is something that theme developers who are submitting free plugins to WordPress.org can optionally go through a review in order to get that tag. And I'm not saying you have to start with one of those themes. But what I'm saying is you can go in the um, developer handbook and you can find what the criteria is in order for someone to get the accessibility ready tag. And then that might tell you what things you would want to look for in a theme as a baseline. Now, I want to be really clear, like this, those are really just a baseline. They're not, it's not going to give you 100% the the best, most accessible starter if you only look for those things. But I think that is a good uh, place to start. Things that I would look for if I'm assessing a theme is one, does it have skip to content links? Two, does it have a clear focus indicator? So you'd hit the tab key and you would just tab through the website from top to bottom. You wanna be able to see that outline and then you wanna see that it goes in order. Um, now, if you know CSS and you're comfortable with editing CSS, you can pick a theme that doesn't have that because that's that's maybe a two second fix, right, to add that outline in. But if you're someone who doesn't know CSS and you're going to use a theme out of the box, then you would want to um, try and find a theme that already has that. Another thing that I would do is I would test out the navigation menus. Uh, and most of the non-block-based themes, the navigation menus are controlled by the theme. So you want to make sure that you can access all of every item in the dropdown. If you don't know how to do styles, then of course you want to look for a theme that has good color contrast. If you know how to do styles, then I sort of disregard any sort of color contrast issues in the theme because I just think, okay, well, I'll just recolor it when I use it. Um, I would say in general, you know, really trying to separate what you need from that theme versus what's going to come in a plugin. Uh, so there are some themes out there that are built with, they have custom builders or they, it's a theme and it includes a form. I would always recommend that someone go choose a form plugin and use a form plugin instead of allowing their theme to create their contact form, for example. You're more likely to have better accessibility output if you choose a plugin that focuses on that one thing versus trying to get a theme that can do all those things for you. Um, another thing along those same lines is I would tend to choose a theme that is more quote basic and I don't mean that it can't be styled and look really professional it can be styled and look really professional but choose a theme that doesn't have a lot of interactive elements um, it doesn't need to have things fading up as you scroll or flying in from the left or the right uh, maybe don't have a carousel there's a lot of data out there that carousels are not required and in fact people don't interact with them or they don't like them or they cause problems on mobile. So I wouldn't choose a theme where the whole top of the home page won't look good if there's not a carousel there. I hope that gives you a good starting point. Um, if you have additional questions, feel free to put them in the chat and we will definitely answer them as we go. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so we have a break after this session and you can share your feedback on the uh, website, which I am posting in the chat as well on the 2023.wvaccessibility.com feedback. Thank you. Bye. Thank you to WordPress Accessibility Day 2023 sponsors. Platinum sponsor, Equalize Digital. Equalize Digital's Accessibility Checker plugin is an automated accessibility scanning tool that helps WordPress websites become and stay accessible. Platinum sponsor, Gravity Forms. Gravity Forms is the professional form builder that you need to create beautiful, powerful, and accessible forms. Gold sponsors, 20i, DQ, Empire Caption Solutions, Pressable, and WP Engine. Silver sponsors, Code Geek, 
Drake Cooper, GoDaddy, Lone Rock Point, Nerd Press, Overnight Website by Kinetic Iris, Riola Networks, A11Y Collective, and The Blogsmith. Bronze Sponsors, Accessicart, Green Geeks Web Hosting, Hall Analysis SEO Consulting, HDC, ITX, IvyCat, Metabox, Pixel Chefs, Simply Schedule Appointments, SiteGround, Termageddon, Underrepresented in Tech, Weglot, and Yoast.